we are taking a look at names investors may want to consider avoiding and stocks worth another look. Laffer Tangler Investment CEO and CIO Nancy Tangler is back with us. And Nancy, let's start with one of those stocks you really like, and that is Broadcom. An interesting pick here, just given the action that we have seen within semiconductors, how much of this has to do with the strength that we are seeing in their custom chip business? Well, Kiko, this this is an extraordinarily well managed company, and um, we, we like the VMware deal. We we think the management expects it to go through in the third quarter. Uh, they have a great capital allocation plan for shareholders, so they return you know a significant portion of free cash flow via dividend increases and stock buybacks. But in addition to that, they expect that. Uh, their enterprise AI uh, computing business is going to grow from 10% to 25% in 2024. They just re-inked um, the deal with Apple for chips. And so there's a lot going well. The stock has run a, a great deal. It's still fairly attractive on our valuation work. And so while we've been trimming it because of, because it's overweighted, if it if it pulled back, we would still uh, add to it. And we with fresh money, we are still um, committing a significant portion of our portfolios to the stock. Um, another one of the stocks you like that caught my eye was Spotify. And that company... Um, is recently, or there are at least reports, that it is going to be offering a new premium tier. And it's interesting that we're seeing sort of parallel activity in music streaming to what we've started to see in video streaming in terms of adding more pay tiers, for example. Um, is that what's sort of drawing you in here, or are there other things you like about Spotify? That, that's such an important point, Julie. Yes. I mean, they have not raised prices since 2011. Um, I used Spotify, then I, ship, I, I shifted to Apple Music. I'm going back to Spotify because Apple keeps raising the price and Spotify's uh, format is just a lot better. But so they have pricing the pricing power lever to pull, but they also showed fiscal discipline. So they're laying off 200 people in the, in the podcast business. Uh, they've kind of regrouped that business. It hasn't been you know, outside of Joe Rogan, it hasn't been terribly successful. And they own 33% of music streaming. So I think, you know, their ecosystem is pretty sound. And if they can leverage that and continue um, to, to focus on expansion and profitability, uh, the CEO thinks they'll be um, net income uh, positive in 2024. That's important. This stock has lost money for a long time. So we, we like the the way they're managing the business. And uh, we think they have uh, not only brand dominance, but the opportunity to raise raise prices. And as you point out, um, the premium business is, a, is another way to improve margins. Nancy, let's talk about one of the names you say that investors should stay away from. Uh, one of them, CVS here. I'm looking at the chart and it is it's not a pretty one so far this year. No, and, and Kiko, I think you know we we um, we were not enthusiastic buyers in the first place. We added a position a couple of years back. Karen Lynch make, is a compelling CEO, but then she pre proceeded, I, I think, to kind of have acquisition FOMO. And so they made a number of acquisitions after being very disciplined about paying down their debt uh, from the um, from the Aetna um, merger acquisition. Uh, they they. Uh, made these acquisitions that aren't going to be accretive for years. And so free cash flow um, is, is going to be muted. And we're a little bit concerned about the sustainability of the dividend. We just can't find the catalyst for outperformance. So we exited a number of months back. It was still a bad portfolio decision. Uh, but sometimes I've learned, you know, as a value manager, sometimes you want to buy more and that's always your instinct. But our decision was that there were much better places to be in the opportunity cost was too great to wait for this one to play out, especially if the dividend becomes at risk. Certainly dividend growth is gonna be at risk. Um, Nancy, another area more broadly that you don't like is in consumer staples. This has been such a fascinating area to me this year, just because of the pricing power narrative that so many of them have put forward, right? So many of them talked about that volume wasn't doing well, at least on the uh, sort of consumer product side, right? Volume wasn't well, but they were able to raise prices. So how are you thinking about it and framing this group as we go into the second half of the year, especially with your thesis that we're going to start to see inflation abate? Well, yes, great points all. Um, I think a couple of things. One, the stocks are pretty fully valued um, and, and that's important to us. We still own names like Procter & Gamble because they do have pricing power, um, but but we we've also I guess embraced a theme for the last two years of old economy companies that are that are embracing the digital revolution, and then those that um, 
are supplying the the arms, if you will, uh, to to digital uh, adaptation. So in the consumer sp staple space, you know, there are a couple of names that you could say, um, you know. Uh, well, more in the discretionary space like McDonald's and Chipotle that are embracing digitization. But what we've decided is we've, you know, we we eliminated Philip Morris from our portfolio again because we couldn't find a catalyst. It was a great defensive name during the bear market last year, uh, but there's limited growth. They've really been um, growing the dividend quite slowly, and you know, it's it's a business that you really buy that stock for the, the dividend because it's it's not a high growth business. So we, we've selectively um, reduced our exposure in staples and we will probably continue to do so because we're finding a lot of attractive names in industrials, um, which tend to do much really well coming out of um, periods of low manufacturing PMIs, contractionary um, PMIs. So that's where we're repositioning ourselves for the next leg up and we still are overweight technology, healthcare, industrials and energy. Okay, some good takeaways as always. Nancy Tengler, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate the time. Thank you.